Hello everyone, I'm Stuart Spinks and this is Beekeeping Short and Sweet. Beekeeping Short and Sweet, a podcast for the inquisitive beekeeper with a short attention span. A beekeeper, in fact, just like me. Well, welcome back and thank you everyone for your comments and feedback about the podcast. Please do keep them coming in. Let me know what you want to hear about and I'll do my very best to incorporate it into an episode in this spring series. Today I'm looking at our monthly workload, things that need to be done, and so much of that of course depends on the weather. You wouldn't know it, but March is supposed to be warming up and launching us into the new beekeeping season but we've just had snow and ice again in a mini beast from the east, and our first inspections of the spring will have to wait. March can be a little frustrating, and that's why the beekeeping workload can vary so much for us and for most beekeepers. But inside the beehive, things should definitely be moving on. A little bit of warm sunshine on the side of the hive means that the clusters will break apart, and some of those bees will head out on cleansing flights, and search for food and water. Others will start going about the spring cleaning duties within the hive, and the queen will be increasing her egg-laying rate to match the lengthening daylight hours. There will, of course, be lots of other activities happening within the hive, and cleaning is one of those main jobs, and you'll see evidence of that as you wait patiently outside the beehive, waiting for the weather to warm up. Once we do get some warm weather, it's a sure sign that you can don your bee suit and light your smoker and start those inspections. Early March for me is still too early to be opening beehives and carrying out any kind of inspection. The chilly early spring air will soon drop the temperature within the brood nest area and you run the risk of chilling the brood that's there. I always think at this time of the year it's better to sit on your hands and wait rather than risk a quick peek and ruin the work that the bees have been putting in over the previous couple of weeks. It's a kind of thermal roller coaster ride through March. Temperatures plummet overnight to sub-zero temperatures, yet during the day, the fine sunny weather can see you walking around your apiary in a t-shirt, cursing the fact that you left your bee suit at home. Of course, local climate is everything. In the past, I've known it to be too cold to inspect here in Norfolk, yet down the road in Suffolk, beekeepers have carried out several inspections before I finally managed to get inside a hive for the very first time. So I stand and watch at the hive entrance. I watch the bees crawl out and take flight, searching out water, nectar and pollen, before clustering back together again to see out another cold night. So what can you do during the month of March to make sure you're fully prepared for that sudden rush of the start of the active bee season? Well, I touched on one thing you can do, and that's watch the entrance of your hives. Seeing plenty of bees flying in and out is always a comfort in the spring. It lets you know they've fought through the worst of the winter and come out the other side. But don't let that fool you, and don't let your guard down. This is also a dangerous time for our bees. Do they have enough food stores to see them through to the first real nectar and pollen flows? Hefting the hive is always an easy way to check, especially if you've been doing this all winter long. Hefting, for those of you that are in the dark, is simply lifting the back of the hive off the stand and gauging the weight to see how much food stores they have initially and then through the winter assessing the weights as it drops month by month. With the current trend towards technology and the use of electronic scales and online apps to measure all kinds of data points within your colony, it almost feels like a dark art of bygone years, but it's still a valid tool for today and one that I use. Early in the month, I would still feed fondant, or if you're in an area where there is little spring pollen, maybe some pollen substitute. I fed pollen sub last year and probably put half of it in the bin. We are blessed with hazel and willow at all of our apiaries, and given the choice, The bees seem to be telling me they prefer the natural resource rather than the one I'm feeding them. That said, some of the colonies really took to it in the latter part of last March, so maybe I'll make some available to the stronger colonies. I used Bee Pro 
from the UK online retailer Bee Equipment. It mixed up really well and I thought that those bees that did feed on it benefited from early growth. I'll put details and links to the product in the show notes as usual. Once the cold weather has moved away a little, the bees will take a syrup feed and this can encourage the queen to increase her egg laying rate and thus the colony will develop more strongly earlier in the year. This of course is essential for many bee farmers who are preparing their colonies to take to migratory pollination crops such as top fruits and soft fruits. For the hobbyist, it might be that you want to attempt early queen rearing this year or that you have an early crop nearby that you'd like to take a spring crop of honey from. My advice would be to always know why you are feeding a stimulative feed. Don't just feed because you read it in a book or overheard one of the old timers in the bee club saying that he was going to do it. The downside to spring feeding is that once you start to feed, you may find you have to keep feeding for an extended period of time. Otherwise the colony may grow and then starve, so just be prepared for that. One of the most important ingredients to a good start in the spring is water, so make sure that there's a supply of water available to your bees near the hives. The bees use this to liquefy and dilute stored honey, and we all know how we feel when we get a little dehydrated. It's probably the same for our bees. It doesn't mean you have to go out and dig a pond. A simple shallow tray with some shingle or pebbles in it is fine. Keep it topped up with water, and the bees will find it and be grateful to you for your efforts. Just don't dig a swimming pool for them, or they may drown. Of course, it's not just about the bees being prepared for a fast start. Have you got all the equipment you need for your plans for this season? Are you prepared? The BBKA Spring Convention is coming up in April and an opportunity to make those much needed purchases before the season finally launches. A word of warning though, I have a shed full of wonderful Spring Convention impulse purchases that were going to make my season perfect only for them to end up on the floor of the shed gathering dust. So make sure you take a shopping list with you. Remember, you have been warned. Another task I like to start in late March is spring cleaning. And I spring clean all of my colonies. It's a frantic process that fills one week in late March or early April. Every floor, brood box and crime board is replaced. Runners are given a light coating of petroleum jelly to help the frames move more easily. And once completed, the early season inspections are so much easier. The difference between inspecting a colony in a freshly cleaned hive compared to struggling on with frames that have been propolised down to the floor is massive and it's a lot less frustrating. It also reduces the amount of infectious material you may have in your hive, such as nosema spores, so it's well worth doing. This is another reason to keep all of your equipment the same. Stick with the same hive type and everything is interchangeable. I clean out one apiary at a time. Take all the dirty equipment away, clean and scorch it all, and then use that for the next apiary. It means I don't need a huge amount of spare equipment stacked up empty at home. If you find that you've lost a colony, don't despair. It happens to everyone at some time in their beekeeping journey. Just make sure as soon as you discover it, you close the entrance to prevent robbing, and then plan when and how you're going to clean the hive and the frames. March is also a good time to carry out an early spring varroa check. For me, this means slipping in the varroa board into the floor and leaving it for a week. A quick check and count up will reveal your varroa count and you can use the online calculator on the UK's National Bee Unit website, BeeBase, to check if you need to do anything by the way of treatment, be it mechanical or chemical. But just remember, you don't need to treat all of the colonies, just those that are showing signs of varroa. It saves you time and money to just work with the hives that need the treatments rather than doing all of them at the same time. One of the most important aspects of successful beekeeping is accurate record keeping. And now's the chance to make that very late New Year's resolution to yourself to keep accurate records this year. With accurate records, you can review on a regular basis how your colonies are performing through the season and then through the winter months it helps you to plan for the following season. And of course there are many different ways to keep records and the most important thing to remember is to make it easy enough 
that you feel able to keep all of the data entries through the entire season. This could be a simple card under the roof, a notebook that you carry around with you to your apiary, or something more sophisticated. I've tried most of these methods and have now settled on a spreadsheet template that I use on my iPad. It's worked really well for me over several seasons now, and the only time it let me down was when I left the iPad on a hot tin roof in full sunshine. Everything went black, but I put the iPad into my cool box for a few minutes and it seemed to recover without any damage, so all was not lost. So if you do use a tablet for anything, do keep it out of the sunshine. If you'd like a copy of my inspection template for iPad, sign up to my Patreon page and drop me a message there and I'll email you a copy. On the subject of Patreon, my thanks to everyone who signed up and for all the feedback and suggestions you're all sending me. If you're not familiar with my Patreon page, it's a crowdfunding website that allows you to support me and in return I can provide more content and support to you. I'll leave the details in the show notes as usual. So that's it. This is March, and as Charles Dickens so aptly put in Great Expectations, it was one of those March days when the sun shines hot and the wind blows cold, when it is summer in the light and winter in the shade. I'm Stuart Spinks, and that was beekeeping short and sweet. Beekeeping short and sweet.